Okay, so given the function y equals the square root of x, we will first find its derivative, so the slope of the tangent line to the function at any given value of x, and then we will use this to find the equation of the tangent line to our function at the point x equals 25. And as always, once we have the derivative of the function at any given value of x, finding the equation of the tangent line at any particular value of x is always very straightforward. So we want the slope of our tangent line. As always, we consider the slope of the secant line, so f of x plus h minus f of x, total change in y, over the change in x being x plus h minus x, which is simply h. But that is the slope of the secant line. As we let h approach 0, the slope of the secant line will approach the slope of the tangent line. First step, we have to find f of x and f of x plus h. We already have f of x, and f of x plus h, as always, is a simple substitution. Our function f of x is root of x for any x. Now we are replacing x by x plus h. So we get the root of x plus h. Minus f of x, well we already have this, it's root of x, over h. And now if you ask yourself, well what do we do next, that we have made the substitution? Well, we are supposed to simplify this expression, but there's not much, it looks on the surface, that needs to be simplified. But look at your case. Every time you have a limit, if there is ambiguity as to what should be done next, the case will tell you what you should be doing. Well, we have this h going to 0, a division by 0. And looking at the first square root, as h goes to 0, we will be left with the root of x minus the root of x, which also will be approaching 0. So we have an indeterminate case in the form of 0 over 0. So it's not clear what's going to happen. But the hint here is we have a 0 over 0 case. The 0 on the numerator is coming from a difference involving square roots. This is hinting at we should be using perhaps conjugation. Every time you have a 0 over 0 case where a difference involving at least one square root is involved, it's a good idea to try and use conjugation. So let's do so here. Let's see what comes out. So let's rewrite the expression, so root of x plus h minus root of x over h. Conjugation, of course, is the idea of multiplying by 1, first taking the expression involving the difference with the square root or square roots, and changing the sign. As we have a negative, we will use a positive. So root of x plus h plus root of x. But of course now we are changing the expression. We can only multiply by 1, so as not to change the expression. So whatever we multiply by, we must divide by the exact same thing. So root of x plus h plus root of x. So all we are doing now is multiplying the expression by 1. This is 1, so we are not changing the expression, only the way it looks. As always, we only gain a simplification if we multiply the original difference of square roots with its conjugate. Multiplying both of these by h will give you nothing. So you leave this as h times all of this, but we will multiply the numerator. And this is when the simplification will occur. So we have on our denominator h times all of the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. Now look at the numerator. And here I'll do this in my head. If you're not comfortable, write it separately on the right. You will have root of x plus h times itself. That's just x plus h. Then you'll have root of x plus h times root of x, but then minus root of x times root of x plus h. Both of these will cancel. And finally, minus root of x times root of x will give you, well, root of x times itself is x, so minus x. 
and the square roots have disappeared from the numerator, and this always happens when you multiply a term with its conjugate. We can cancel the two x's. x minus x is 0. And now we're left with something quite simple. The limit as h approaches 0 of h over h times the root of x plus h plus the root of x. But if you notice, we have a common multiple of h on top and on the bottom, so we can cancel. And now we are left with, as you'll see, a trivial limit. Every time you cancel a common multiple of h top and bottom, you can always then let h approach 0, and the limit is going to work out. Well, if you cancel h, you're left with 1 on the numerator. Over here, this h is gone, which leaves you with root of x plus h plus root of x. And now we can let h approach 0. There is a single h being this one. And as this h goes to 0, what are we left with? Well, 1 is always 1 over, as h goes to 0 here, we are left with root of x for the first term. Plus, there's no h here, so it's just root of x. And that's our limit. Of course, this looks kind of silly, as root of x plus root of x is 2 root of x. And there's our derivative. So if you ask, at any given value of x, what is the slope of the tangent line to the function y equals root of x? The slope is 1 over 2 root of x. That is your derivative. So we're done part 8. The derivative of root of x is, quite simply, 1 over 2 root of x. Well, now we can answer part b, finding the equation of the tangent line to the function root of x at the point x equals 25. So let us rewrite quickly what we have so far. The function is root of x. Our derivative we have found to be 1 over 2 root of x, and our point of tangent c, at least the x value, is 25. Well, the tangent line, of course, is a line, so the equation will be y equals mx plus b. As always, the slope of the tangent line equals the derivative of the function at the point of interest, here being x equals 25. So we must evaluate the derivative at x equals 25. Well, let us replace. Our derivative is 1 over 2 root of x. But we are replacing x by 25. So 1 over 2 times root of 25. The root of 25 is 5. 2 times 5 is 10, so it's 1 over 10. Then you have the slope of the tangent line. So y equals m, 1 over 10, x plus b. And to find b, the y-intercept, we need to find the y-coordinate of the point of tangency. Well, we already have the x-coordinate. Well, the function is y equals root of x. So if x is 25, y is the root of 25, which is 5. And now we have the point of tangent C. x equals 25, y equals 5. So the tangent line, of course, touches the curve at this, at this point. And so this point is a point on the equation of the, is a point on the tangent line, sorry. So it must be a solution to the equation. So we can replace y by 5, 1 over 10 times x, but x is 25, so you get 25 over 10, plus b. Well, we can easily isolate b if we subtract 25 over 10 on both sides. So 
So b will equal 5 minus 25 over 10. Common denominator, 5 is 50 over 10. So we get 50 over 10 minus 25 over 10, which happens to be 25 over 10. And now we're done. The equation of our tangent line at x equals 25 is x over 10 plus b, but b is 25 over 10. And of course here as both are over 10, if you wanted, this is totally optional, you could write this as x plus 25 all over 10. And that's it.